This is a special bonus episode of the Uptime Wind Energy Podcast, and I'm here with Rosemary Barnes. And Rosemary, the Global Energy Talent Index Report came out, and it's a product of AirSwift. AirSwift is a company that finds talent for your company. And they do uh, research into what's happening in renewables in terms of employees and what they're thinking, what they're feeling, what they're getting paid. And who's moving in, who's moving out. Uh, so I, I took a kind of a deep dive in this report. I wanted to talk to you about it today and kind of get your thoughts because a lot of people in wind in particular uh, have a lot to think about over the next year because wind energy is expanding so quickly. There's a lot of opportunities and that's good, but it also creates a little bit of chaos <laughs> if you're looking for talent. So I'll throw some numbers at you, okay, in, in terms of uh, wind farm project managers, what they make a, a year in the, in the United States. Uh, the, the report actually gives it by country. I, I'm just talking United States here. It doesn't apply everywhere, of course. Uh, project managers in the U.S., if they're permanent, uh, the average salary is $74,000, a little over $74,000 a year. If they're contract workers, it's about $525 a day roughly. Wind turbine technicians, uh, permanent ones, uh, are getting paid about $57,000 a year, or if they're on contract, about four, a little over $400 a day. Those are some good numbers, uh, I, I think. They've been going up recently. So a wind turbine tech making $58,000 is not bad. I know a lot of technicians that are making $100,000. 100 plus, and those guys are really busting their backside to do it. Does, uh, but as part of this, because salaries are going up and oil and gas is booming, which is roughly in the same area in the United States, there's a lot of moving around. Uh, but I, I want to talk to you specifically about what some of the issues were for employees. Uh, it does look like in the renewable sector, a lot of people are willing to to re relocate, right? Um, over half of the people surveyed would be willing to relocate. However, uh, if you if you're most of the people were under the age of 45, but if they have family, they're less likely to move. So it seems like once you establish yourself somewhere and have a couple of kids that probably get them in school, you're not likely to move around. So it tends to be kind of a younger scene on the technician side, I, I'm guessing, because of that, because of all the travel. Yeah, the um, wind turbine techs that I work with, uh, oh, I don't know, it's a, it's a mix. I guess there's a lot more uh, really young ones, but you definitely have to have some experience in there as well. So I see a mix. Uh, they also, uh, they were asking the employees in the renewable sector if, if their companies have been involved in any disruptions, regardless of what that would be, that has uh, reduced profits or revenues. And about a little bit of a third of the respondents said, yeah, uh, our, their business had been impacted uh, in profits and revenues, which is, that's the highest percentage of respondents, more than thir a third of them, uh, actually 36%, than any other sector in the energy business. So wind got hit, and I guess solar got hit hard over the last couple of years because of COVID, where oil and gas obviously didn't get hit as hard because they were already pumping oil <laughs> for gas. But, then, and, but that creates a little bit of, of an offset, right? That wind techs, wind project managers see their oil and gas counterparts uh, not in that situation. And there's a big draw of renewable workers into oil and gas at the moment. Because it pay, maybe pays a little bit better, probably less travel, and better upside. So we're in a time where we're seeing a really tight uh, employment base for wind technicians. A lot of them are moving to oil and gas or are willing to. That's a that's not great, right? <laughs> at least in the United States. Yeah. Well, you know what else they could do? I've just um, just now <laughs> while you're talking, looking at the the figures, because like you said, that it's uh, separated out by country. 
Um, and you mentioned the figure for a wind farm project manager in the US. And I noticed in Australia, it's more than double. So if you want to more than double your salary, <laughs> then I suggest, uh, yeah, heading heading over to Australia. It's interesting because I just uh, I have just been quoting for some international jobs um, and for site visits uh, in, in the region. And now I'm a bit worried that, you know, I'm quoting on uh, Australian industry prices that I'm going to be way, way off the mark um, when it comes to, you know, working with US or European companies um th that's an astounding difference right i mean i know there's a huge shortage here and there's just not many people with the experience and um you know i i take that to my advantage definitely the experience that i gained <laughs> working in europe in the factories and in wind farms it's rare in australia and um yeah so i'm benefiting but um i was shocked to see that it's literally literally double and then when you compare to to europe it's nearly nearly triple um, <laughs> the Australian salary compared to European. So, wow. Well, if you're willing to move, yeah, you, you can actually earn more money. If it, It's changing lifestyle for sure. If you're moving out of Texas to Australia, I wouldn't say that's the same sort of lifestyle. But yeah, you could actually make more money. Uh, I don't know. If you move to Queensland, maybe. I, I reckon rural Australia doesn't have such a different vibe to, to Texas. A, a, a little bit, obviously. I mean, a, a lot. I mean, it's, it's going to be it's going to be different. Um, but yeah, it's it's nice here. You know, the weather's the weather's nice. Um, the beaches are nice. Do they have trucks? Do they have pickup trucks in Australia? Is that a thing? OK, come on. We invented it. We, that is an Australian invention. So look, just settle, settle down. <laughs> <laughs> the story is it's a farmer who wanted he wanted a way to um, be able to have the same car to work on his farm during the week and still be able to take his mum to church on the weekend. Um, so he invented the, the utility vehicle. We call them utes in Australia, not pickup trucks, but same diff. The market is so tight in renewable energy at the moment. Uh, this is a crazy number. When I read it, like I had to read it two or three times to make sure I understood it. 31% of the respondents have indicated they have been approached about a position in another company six or more times. That is astounding. Is it the same the same job that's approaching them six times? Because I feel like, you know, at that point, they're not getting the message. <laughs> no means no. I'm assuming this is around technicians, right? That, that, the technicians are getting called all the time. If, if you're technician profile pops up on LinkedIn and it looks like you're open to work, you're going to have uh, people, recruiters reaching out to you all the time. But six times, a third of the respondents, six times or more, that's that's insane. It seems like that would naturally force up pay rates, right? If you're, if there's that much demand, there's there's got to be a breaking point here. Either they're going to have to start paying technicians and project managers, site managers more money, or they're going to have to start training a bunch of people. That's what that indicates, right? I mean, what else does it, what else can you do? Yeah. And I mean, I know the last time that I did my um, GWO training, the training that you've got to do when you want to be able to climb wind turbines, the types of people that were there, there was very few who had been in the industry before. Most people were doing it um, for the first time. Um, and they were all tradespeople from any kind of random trade that um, had, you know, decided they wanted, yeah, they wanted to get into the wind industry either because they cared about the um <laughs> The environment and the future of their industry um, or because of a lifestyle change. There was one young, um, he was a, an electric, electrical apprentice um, and he had moved from Sydney uh, to, where was it, somewhere in rural um, New South Wales just because the cost of living in Sydney is so crazy that he couldn't, he, he couldn't live remotely close to his, his work um, in the city. And so he's just moved for the rural lifestyle and, and loves it. So, um, yeah, you see people changing from all sorts of different backgrounds. Uh, the skills that you need as a wind turbine technician aren't so different to what you need, um, yeah, as in you know in plenty of other industries and the same for wind farm project management the job ads that i see in australia and the, that's the kind of things that i guess that i get um cold cold about on on linkedin 
um, they're looking for like construction project management um, or yeah, a variety of other kinds of, of engineering. So, you know, there's transferable skills there. You certainly don't need to have worked in the wind industry before um, if you're, you know, a good, a good project manager and you, um, especially like construction in, in Australia, a lot of the jobs are to do with new wind farms more so than maintaining existing ones. And so then, you know, it is a lot about uh, we need to get approvals for, you know, a range of different approvals and permits and we need to build roads and you know all those sorts of things uh scheduling of, of different you know trades and bits of equipment it's it's not so un, unusual so i think yeah people if you're in a, a related industry and you see these figures and um these salaries are more than what you're making and you think it sounds interesting then make the move it's not not as big a deal as you might think well I- I'm going to throw some anecdotal info at you. You can come back to me and say, Alan, you idiot. It's anecdotal information. But I I do get comments on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. Go weather guard wind and look up uptime uh, on YouTube. And uh, there was a comment there just recently, and it stuck with me. It said it was someone who was in studying to be a technician. And the the person said there were 30 when they started. There are 10 now. And they're not done. But is it a, a certificate course, like a college course, a community college? Yeah, community colleges. You see a lot of community colleges uh, having programs, and there's some private uh, training situations. And Rangel Renewables is setting up their up their own training system down there in Texas, um, and others are too. I think GEV is trying to do something similar. But I, I'm just concerned about what the dropout rate is because if you lose – Say you lose half of them, then you got to sort of double the amount of candidates to come into the door. So you just have enough to to feed the amount of wind turbine work you have. Uh, in the United States, we're going to go from about 70, 80,000 wind turbines to 200,000, right? So we're going to need to at least double the technician workforce over the next couple of years. I don't know if that's going to happen without some significant pay increases in wind. And it doesn't feel like the wind sector is willing to do that at the moment. I was at uh, American Clean Power last week, and we were discussing uh, bringing new technicians in because everybody's looking for technicians at the moment and how difficult it is to get them because there is a significant amount of dropout. And I, we were bantering about about what's the dropout rate all about. And I'm, my conclusion was a lot of people don't like to climb at height. I think a lot of people make it to the point where they, then they start to climb. It's a serious thing. I mean, if you're afraid of heights, it's not like you're climbing a, a, a stepladder to, ch- to check the gutters. You're going 100 plus feet in the air. It's a long way down. And, and probably a lot of people don't realize that they're afraid of heights until they get there and realize like, one, it's a lot of work. And two, if they have any sort of uh, concern about it mentally, like uh, I don't feel safe, you're not going to stick around long. I, I, I assume that's what's driving it because otherwise... A lot of these, I assume a lot of the technicians come out of the military and other industrial jobs, and that's the part where they have trouble. So some of the reasons, Rosemary, some of the reasons that uh, people want to work in WIN is because, according to the survey, it aligns with a lot of their values in regards to helping the planet, decarbonization, and working in a collaborative environment, and, and also a sort of a flexible work environment. I think renewables is one of those you can have that. Uh, And as uh, the industry continues to grow, that's going to be one of the pieces that draws new recruits to it. And you, you were in it directly, Rosemary, you have more of a feeling for it than I do. Does, does, is that something you saw while working in, in wind? It's really changed a lot because I've been working with renewables for for close to ish to 20 years now. And at the start, it was all, you know, people who were pretty environmentally inclined. Everyone was was doing it because they had a passion for saving the planet and we were all taking a, a decent pay cut. I remember my first job in the renewables industry when it came to my first um, salary review. I did some research um, which I, I stupidly had not done when I accepted the position. I did some salary benchmarking research and found out that I was underpaid by 30%. Um, and when I went into the review, I said, well, yeah, because it's a renewables industry and, you know, that's what you have to you have to do if you want to, you know, do good for the planet, then you are not going to do well financially. 
Um, and then if you fast forward through to my time at uh, when I was working at LM Wind Power, um, wind turbine blade manufacturer, I had colleagues who didn't even believe in climate change. It, you know, it was just a, a regular mainstream industry that people were doing because they liked the, t- the kind of work, um, because it was a job, you know, locally that matched their skills, um, all sorts of reasons. Um, and I think that the, the money is coming up pretty close. Like it, it might not be on par with um, fossil fuel uh, industry jobs now, but compared to m- most other kinds of engineering, it, you don't really have to take a hit anymore um, in your in your salary um, to work in the wind industry. And I, I think that that's really huge because you get a much bigger um talent pool and you don't you know you don't burn people out it burns you out when you're working when you you know so undervalued compared to what you could earn somewhere else um so i i I think that the industry has matured so much in the other 20 years that i've been involved do you think it's going to cross oil and gas you think renewables will pass oil and gas in terms of 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 pay and benefits are we getting we're getting close Yes, and I think it will be partly because oil and gas will eventually taper off because you know um, it's going to be <laughs> there's going to be less and less of it, so they're going to need less people. Yeah, but I do also see heaps of people that have moved from oil and gas industry to renewables because they you know want to feel good about the work that they're they're doing, and they kind of expect that they're still going to earn good money. And same with a lot of finance people. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of people working in renewable energy finance now that have come from, you know, traditional finance background. They're not taking a 30% pay cut to come work in the industry. And so, you know, people like me um, benefit from that because I, I, you know, I don't accept less now than I would in another industry um, and I don't have to. So I think it's really, <laughs> I think it's really good that um, for the industry that we can get good people and keep good people. Well, let me ask you this because you've done both sides that you've been in the corporate wind world and as you're running your own business. What's what's the preferred path for someone coming in? Would it be better to basically get into a, a small business or start your own consulting company if you're an engineer or be do your own technician thing as a technician or is is the pathway into the industry going into a large corporation? I don't think you can start out with consulting. Uh, I mean, I would have no clients if I didn't have that industry experience, um, you know, like a, a solid solid chunk. And that's what I've got that's quite rare in Australia. There aren't many people here that have worked so long and, um, you know, I spent months and months in factories in Europe and America and um, also spent a, a lot of time in um, wind farms climbing up turbines. Um, without that, I wouldn't have it. <laughs> consulting practice, especially not in the the wind industry. Um, a lot of engineers are going into like major consulting companies and they're, they're getting work, but I personally don't see the the quality and those kinds of engineers that have only worked in consulting. I think if you wanted to go on and have a really interesting career, then, um, you know, as an engineer, you, ha- you need to get your hands dirty. You need to go where the things are, you know, where, where they're happening. Um, all the kinds of problems that you deal with as a consultant, you need to have been on the, the the other side, the manufacturer or the, um, y- y- you know, someone, uh, a technician or, you know, um, yeah, working in a, f- a factory or at a wind farm is y- you accelerate the learning by like 10 or 100 times. You just learn so fast in those environments. Um, so I definitely recommend doing that doing that first and then deciding you don't have to do it forever. I certainly wouldn't work in a wind turbine factory full time. Um, I never have worked there full time, but I would have when I was young. I would never do it now. You know, you need so much energy to um, support twenty four seven um, factory operations, and you learn learn fast and wear yourself out. <laughs> it's exhausting. So that, that's really good advice, Rosemary. That uh, to get into wind, it does help to to go with an established company, get some understanding of how the business works, get get your experience in, and then. When you can, if you can, transition to do your own thing. There's a lot of people in wind in the renewable sector that are running their own businesses. And, and rightly so. That's good. And you're a good example of that. Mm-hmm.